collection of Disney Star Wars shill creators trying to call on the demonetization, which is the first step on the road to uh, deplatforming of pop culture content creators like Nerd Roddick, like Geeks and Gamers, like Star Wars Theory. And talk about some slimy bastards, Kaido. Uh, content creators calling for other content creators to be demonetized. Bit of a, a low blow, if you ask me. Uh, what yeah. do you make of the whole situation? I think it's scummy. Like I said in the like I said in the, in, in the video, I, I think it's I think it's really crappy and it shows your morals of anything because if you can't handle somebody else having a difference of opinion without them wanting to be deplatformed and and keep in mind these are the people that are like they love Ray and they love you know the resistance and the Rebel Alliance. You're literally doing the fucking Empire's work, trying to get a multi billion dollar corporation to come down and slam on somebody because you don't like their opinions. And it shows how fragile you are, and it shows your real morals because mm -hmm. you we don't like your opinion. I think you're stupid if you like the sequel trilogy. I don't want you demonetized. I don't want you to have your voice taken away. No, I would much rather you speak so I can see how dumb you are. And plus, you have that right. That's that's one thing that uh, they don't really understand. Like with the freedom of speech, you have the freedom to be stupid. OK, so if they say something and we don't like it, we think it's dumb. They have the freedom to do so. Same as if they don't like what Ryan or Jeremy or any of them say and they think it's stupid. They have the freedom to do that. So that right there just shows you're not you're you're not who you pretend to be. You're projecting. Mm -hmm. You're not like a, a good person because no good person would want to take somebody's livelihood away just because they don't like their opinion on a fictional franchise. That's fucking stupid. So <laughs> I think I think they all deserve each other. Molly Damon, fucking Cut Katarn, all of them. I think they all deserve each other because they're they're fragile and they're soft and they're and they're fake. They're just mm -hmm. fake, and you can see right through them. And from my perspective, we operate the channel on a budget of zero because, well, I never thought of this becoming any kind of a business. I just, ugh, ugh. You'll never see Reality Base turn into a business, folks, because it will collapse. That's <laughs> why a, a simple hub of content creation with a donatory base system is probably the limit of, of this channel's uh, growth operations. I'm going to keep full control of Reality Based because there's nothing worse, Kaida, than losing control of your own project, yep. at least in, in my view. And it just goes to show that agents of the establishment, especially when the Acolyte was canceled, they were panicked because of that situation. Folks like oh, yeah. Star Wars Explained, especially the Disney shill tubers, panicked when that show got canceled. Because Disney, along with the BBC, are two of the only platforms where they can just release project after project, they can all bomb, and the company will still be around and firing on all cylinders. For Disney to cancel a show is a bit of a surprise, because I, I wasn't expecting, expecting the Acolyte to be cancelled. I was expecting it to, you know, zombie on, for lack of a, of a better term. So it surprised me. It certainly surprised our opposition, and I think that that panic led to the uh, to the reaction, which was, "How could the show have been cancelled? It must have been because of the negative publicity of all these evil uh, racists and sexists and and homophobes and all that sort of bullshit they they label labeling as part of their narrative control." And what we saw was a panic reaction, which had absolutely no effect, which then turned into an L, so much so that Team YouTube made it clear, okay, you disagree with what these people uh, have to say, what they have to offer? They're not breaking any of our, of our rules, although they call them guidelines, yet you get punished for it if you break them. Uh, get your priorities straight, YouTube. They're either guidelines or rules. Pick one. But the point is, ladies and gentlemen, YouTube isn't, in my view, pro-content creator. In my view, it's pro-corporate. For them to come out and basically say, these guys didn't break any of our, of our guidelines, any of our rules, is to basically say that in regards to pop culture content creation, you can speak your mind freely, fairly, and whoever resonates with the most people prevails. And that terrifies 
the shill tubers, not just on Disney's end, but on everyone else's end. Because unlike in, say, the political domain, where there's clear suppression of those who cover a certain type of politics, that isn't the case with pop culture, which I think is a great mistake for the establishment because of, of how pop culture can influence people's political views, but to each their own. Our opposition see a difference between the two, whereas folks like uh, Nerd Roddick, Geeks and Gamers, the folks who made names for themselves towards the end of the 2010s and the early 2020s, when a lot of political channels were being purged at that time, they have gained a lot of support by merging popular culture topics and a few political topics here and there as part of topics of the day, especially post-assassination attempt. I think yeah. that event caused political discourse to actually be talked about because if they can try and do in a presidential candidate slash former president, well, we're all for the chopping block. Yeah, uh, what, what do you think? think? Do to you. Mm, exactly. I mean, what do you think, uh, Kaider, about the whole situation? I mean, the acolyte getting cancelled, uh, uh, the the whole suppression uh, attempt and, and all that? I will say, um, I will say that the it getting canceled was a surprise. Oh, before I go, bye, Sonya. See you later, Sonya. Lovely lady. Hopefully, you have a great rest of your day. Yes, enjoy the rest of your thirsty Thursday. But oh, before <laughs> it's thirsty Thursday. <laughs> but the acolyte getting canceled was a surprise because it's like, well. I never thought that they would do that for a Disney Star Wars show, especially not one that checks all those kind of boxes. It must really be garbage, you know, and they must have not got any views. That was my first thought was it didn't get any views. They must have recognized that nobody's watching this garbage and that the uh, like the discourse going on around Star Wars right now is not favorable for them. And everything that's going on with Disney is not favorable. So, of course, you know, it makes sense that they would cancel it. So the reaction going, oh, it's you, it's the bigot's fault. It's like, no, it's your fault. You didn't either, A, you didn't watch the show, or B, you watched the show, and there's not as many of y'all as y'all said there was. So it's like, okay, the show failed because you failed the show. And it was catering to an audience that does not really care about this stuff. What they need to do is get back to their base their base of fans, and they could get somewhere. And you can't say it's racist. You can't say it's the racist fault because Andor's season one is fucking, is great, okay? Mm -hmm. I didn't think it was going to be good at all. I thought it was going to be terrible. And I watched it, and I'm like, this is great. And who's the lead in that show? It's a Latino. You can barely understand him sometimes, but he's fucking great in the show. The, the so, irony, you know, the, it's the irony that the best Star Wars shows that we've seen on Disney's end have little to no, uh, what's the word I'm looking for? Um, little no to no connection, uh, uh, to, connection Kathleen Kennedy. to not just her, but to the ideas of the Jedi and the ideas of the Force. I mean, you look at The Mandalorian, the first two seasons, it's focused on the bounty hunter. You look at Andor, it's focused at the slow but surely and steady growth of the rebellion which was led by uh, non-force users for the most part yeah it, it just goes to show that it is technically possible to make a, a at least a decent star wars project that doesn't really have much connection with the core tenets of star wars uh the force the jedi Skywalkers as the so-called Skywalker saga, that sort of thing. I uh, one thing I didn't really like about the acolyte is where's the star and where's the wars in the Star Wars? <laughs> Where is the Star Wars? Where is what the main thing that sucks about that show mm -hmm. is where is the narrative thread that makes sense? Because the show falls apart in the very first episode. The very first episode, before you even get five minutes into the show, it falls apart. And then it just gets worse and worse and worse throughout the first episode. Ugh. And it's and it has nothing to do 
with the character's race, nothing to do with the character's gender. It has everything to do with the story that's being told and how stupid it is and how you can try to sit here and say, this is a good narrative when it is not. The writing makes no sense. How did, okay, how did Osha leave her ship, go to the other side of the galaxy, murder somebody, come all the way back onto her ship in a night? And not only that, how did she do that without there being any kind of logs of her taking a ship from the one that mm -hmm. she was on? How did she do that? It, how, why do her and May have the same haircut? It's been fucking nine years. You know, you, you start putting these, you start thinking, you're like, wait, none of this makes any sense. This, And then on top of that, she murdered somebody in a night and the Jedi found out the next day and caught up to her in the same day. That, how short is this galaxy? You know, so it's like you're not making any sense. You don't know how to tell a story. So black when, girl magic. That's how. <laughs> that's how it is. She had a fucking portal come out of her uh, fake dreadlocks. You know, it's called the dark side brains. of the force for a reason, Gaida. She jumped down that hole that they had, and then popped down on the other side like a fucking goomba. The the wormhole is indeed a black hole, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> <laughs> But uh, in all in all seriousness, in regards to the whole situation, I ain't mean, trying to to project your your hostility onto other creators isn't the way to go. No. It was it was simply a panic reaction that didn't work. Just another example of the modern audience being a, a simple illusion of the empire of lies within the fog of the cultural war a lot of mm. references there but it just goes to show that when you really penetrate the matter folks a lot of these shows are hyped up through hot air because i literally believe that the modern audience doesn't exist it's not real it, it, it's like the matrix in that everyone who's a part of it is either plugged in or an agent of the system they're certainly not the majority of of people because normies don't watch this shit they're nope. doing other things on other platforms folks we are literally being gaslit to oblivion by a few companies that have more money than sense that have been infiltrated and indoctrinated by crazy lunatics who want to brainwash people but they want to brainwash people that don't watch and therefore don't exist for them to brainwash. It is so insane that it, it's as sane as saying they're eating the dogs <laughs> or they're eating the cats during a presidential debate. If you're watching that, you're thinking, what the fuck? Really? And then the, the journo rat going, oh, well, that's there are no confirmed reports. It's like, dude, I saw it on television. That's basically <laughs> what Trump said. Dude, I literally I saw, saw the video of yeah. the dude chopping up the cat in the middle of the street. What are you talking he, about? He should have gotten like a big, like a big, you know, one of those tablets, you know, when Windows 8 was was the thing and everyone had these massive tablet computers. He should yeah. have got that up and showed them. Show <laughs> them all. Stop lying to people. But it just goes to show whether it be in the political domain or the pop culture domain, our opponent's tactics are the same. They use institutional power to establish the narrative control. Then they try to gaslight you into, into oblivion if you oppose the narrative control. And then they use cancel culture tactics if you haven't been gaslit to oblivion. And the more prominent you are, the harder it is to cancel you. Dr. Disrespect is a a fantastic example of that, whether or not you agree with, with the man. He is literally uncancelable at this point. An even bigger example would be Mr. Beast and the whole, um, uh, what, what's that fucking tranny demon's name again? Chris Tyson. Chris, yeah, Chris Tyson situation. That's, that's one hell of a fucking quagmire. But the point is, folks, <laughs> our opponents are using the same tactics, and they're not working anymore. It ain't 2014 no more. Yeah. It ain't 2016 no more. There are whole new generations of content creator out there highlighting the problem, finding solutions, and being the change that they want to see in their own respective and individual ways, resonating with fine folks and fellow creators alike. And those kinds of tactics 
whether you throw them at content creators like Nerd Roddick and Geeks and Gamers or presidential candidates like the Supreme President Donald Trump. They ain't working. Your time is over. Accept defeat and fade away. I'm sure you'll get a chance in a few decades' time to come back with new tactics and try to take us all down then, but you've had your time. Like Agent Smith says to Morpheus, it's our world. It's our time. There we go. I'm full of references today. <laughs> but, I love uh, it, though, man. Oh, well, it, it's, a, it's a way of explaining something complex in a very short period of time. And it can annoy some people because, you know, I don't do it as good as I should, folks. Oh, you so bro, you, you're, you, you're hitting the, uh, the nail on the head, bro, with all your shit. Because if this had been five years ago, hell, three years ago, and they would have tried this tactic, or, or they all would have got demonetized. If this was old Twitter, they would have got demonetized. And the fact that people, like, not just people on our side mm -hmm. of, of the owl, all people are like, whoa, what are you doing? This, is, this isn't this is right. Why would you do that? That goes to show you that, like, the normies are waking up. Because it takes normies a while to realize what's going on. But once they realize it, they, they are, they're tired. They get tired real quick once they realize what's happening. So I, I really do, like, when I saw that, Mm -hmm. And because I expected my video to get obliterated. I'm not going to lie. I was like, they're going to get my ass. You know, they're going to be like, they're going to call me all kind of uh, coon monkeys, whatever. You know what they do. And then everyone is in the comments like, yeah, this isn't right. And why would they do this? And, you know, I don't even agree with them. And I don't even think this is right. And it's like, OK, so we're getting to some kind of normalcy. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, I, I just love that, man. I, it was it a great moment. It's the institutional power, I think, that's going to tip the edge, folks, because unfortunately, our opposition, whether it's in the political or the pop culture realm, they have infested the institutions so effectively that even as more and more people are speaking their minds and speaking truth to power, while they still have institutional power, they can still spread narrative control and wreak certain things like statistics or uh, audience numbers or i don't know ballots to name uh, but a few in in regards to all the situations we face but the more people who stand up the more people who speak their minds the more you can be the change you want to see whether we like it or not uh, talking is the foundation to acting like physically acting not acting acting i know that's a strange reference to utilize but that's the way we do things in the West. We talk about a situation like most democracies do. And when nothing happens in a positive way, that talk, that state of mind, it winds you up. And when you're wound up enough, you get unleashed. And then all sorts of crazy things happen. And then we get what we want after a brief struggle. And I think that's the way it has to be, whether it's in our popular culture or in our... Uh, political states, especially in the United Kingdom and the United States. My goodness, what's worse? A legal eagle who can't stop cackling or a legal eagle that is literally taking uh, subsidies away from pensioners to keep their heating on. Time to face the light.